the wrong button there. Sorry about that. Yeah, uh, we kind of took a another. Hopefully, I'm back on. <laughs> we kind of took another path uh, on the Ultramarine. We kind of. I mean, I'm gonna go through and kind of crank it up a notch, turn it up to 11 if I can. But um, I don't know if we'll do that today. But. Um, Cool, awesome. Uh, Scarecrow, that might be a fun one. We can do that real quick. Um, yeah, let's give that a shot. But uh, let me go check on those brushes real quick just to make sure I have them loaded up. So brushes, we'll go in here to uh, ornamental in here. And we have, okay, so we have the alphas. So the multi-alpha brushes are the ones I'm uh, going to check on first. We'll grab both of those. And then we have the multi-IMM uh, brushes here. And I can go ahead and... Let's see, load these up here, double click, and then comma key, double click. There we go. So now uh, let's grab one of these things here. And this is the alpha brushes. So um, in here, I've got these brushes loaded up. So these here are the multi-alpha brushes. So this is geometry loaded up. So as I switch the geometry, it's going to swap those alphas out. And then if I have something high res enough, which uh, in this case probably wouldn't be, but over here, let's go ahead and just grab this here and split this off and grab this one here and split this off. And then we'll subdivide this up. Maybe, oops, that might be a little bit much. Let's see if I can do any of these work enough. Let me see. Let's say, oh, delete lower. Grab this one here. Split X symmetry. There we go. And then, sorry, I had some teeth on there that was uh, <laughs> causing some problems. There we go. So, okay, we got a bunch of these loaded in. I've got some stuff. So now I can go through here and do all sorts of alpha stuff as well as as long as I don't have subdivision history on, or I have a, a null object here, I can go back into my brushes here. So these are the alpha br drag out brushes, and then volume two IMM. Okay, alphas IMM, and then these are the IMM versions. So if I drag these out, they'll become an IMM brush. And then over here under modifiers, we have projection strength up to 100, and that'll kind of wrap that object around. Um, sorry about that. Okay. Uh, I'm doing good. So let's see. Let's see. Um, let's go into. I'm just gonna relaunch ZBrush here. Let's go into uh, what's it called? Scarecrow. Now is that the Batman Scarecrow or just a random Scarecrow in a field type thing? We could do either or. Or uh, from the Wizard of Oz, we could do that too. Maybe give that a shot. Let's see here. Um, I don't know if, uh, let's see, Batman Scarecrow, I guess is, I don't know his full name here. Yeah, something like this might be kind of fun. A little bit of cloth, maybe just a, a body with the uh, clothing on as well, or a suit. I wonder if I've got an old suit I can just borrow from, uh, or we're gonna hop into Marvelous Designer real quick and see if they have something. Um, okay, let's try that. Uh, so, First, we got our reference here, and this might be a quick one too. So, kind of a face, kind of a kind of made of cloth here with a mouth that's kind of open. So, I think this is a decent image here, maybe that kind of encapsulates what I would be going for. Um, let's also make sure. Okay, that's up. Good. Okay, we'll move this down. Or do we want to do something more stylized? That one's kind of cool. It's got a noose. Hmm. Hmm. Or maybe I'll just leave this up and we'll just kind of take, take all of them. Okay. So let's go in here and let's go ahead and grab a uh, sphere edit, um, make poly mesh 3d and maybe hop into our comma key here. Let's go into actually in our projects, you're going to have um, a male and a female, but I don't want to remove everything from my scene that I might be working on. So I'm gonna go in here to load tools from project and we'll hop into ZBrush 2022, uh, C program files, pixel like ZBrush 2022, Z projects, and then um, 
we'll go in here to mail, A-J-J-K-L-M, Z-P-R, and that'll bring up this Z project here that has the mail body. So, okay, and I'll keep an eyeball over here. So if I miss anything, just keep shouting it out. Okay, so um, I guess we'll start with this. And in fact, you know, we, we put out a sphere under our scene, but I think we can just start with this guy's head. And let's go ahead, and I don't need a ton of subdivided geometry on him, so I'm just gonna take him to subdivision level one, delete higher. We'll duplicate him off. And then around the head area, it looks like I might, if we are gonna have a noose, that might free me up to be a little bit tricky or so we've got the this head here and then the noose and then we've got this kind of um what's it kind of lumpy <laughs> foldy cloth on here uh, i think i might do that in two passes just to kind of make it a little bit easier so let's go ahead and say control w to make this up make sure it's all one poly group control shift grab slice curve and we'll just slice right where that neck will be and we'll go ahead and hide the original body here and then uh, we can do that second cloth separately. So let's go ahead and say geometry modify topology delete hidden after you control shift click on that. And uh, we have X symmetry turned on. Um, shoot, let's go ahead and say, uh, let's say X symmetry turned on zero mesh half up size down to zero just to kind of remesh this. And so we've got decent quads. You know what? We're probably going to do some pretty heavy modification to this. So what I'm going to do is let's just go ahead and dynamesh this. So when we dynamesh, it should go ahead and close all the holes for us. So under here, underneath geometry, dynamesh, just turn off blur, resolution up a little bit. There we go. So that'll go ahead and close all of our holes. We'll tap X for X symmetry. We'll hit control W, control drag to re-dynamesh. And then uh, we'll go ahead and, uh, you know, start making our face that way. That sound about right. And then let me move this out of the way here. And then, uh, so we got our original body here. So let's go ahead and go to deformation, inflate. That's gonna be under your deformation menu down here. Inflate somewhere way down here. And then uh, now we've got our head working. So it looks like he's got some bulging eyes. Let's go ahead and tap L to get rid of our lazy mouse on our standard brush. So he's got some bulging eyes in here. So we can go ahead and just kind of work our mask around, which is really just a modification of our Head. I'm gonna hold down shift and turn down my Z intensity a bit because I have that it's set to smooth stronger. And then this will be kind of sculpted out, although we may fake this. Usually when you do like a Spider-Man head or a Scarecrow head, in this case, uh, it might not be great to have uh, that nose on there. So I'm gonna hold down Alt and we'll go ahead and uh, kind of carve this in and this will kind of be the mouth area. And then we'll put stitches across there. That should go pretty quickly. Stitches, hat we have, okay, okay. There's something to work with here. Uh, so now he's looking kind of like a bank robber, but um, we'll go ahead and fix that and then we'll have some hair sticking out. Okay, so on here, hold down shift and uh, this will be that big craggly. Uh, he's got kind of a, more of a frowny face. He doesn't have a real big joker smile. So this will kind of cut down across here and this will be kind of the major block out. Let's crank up our resolution on our Dynamesh just a bit. I don't know what exactly scale we're working at, but um, something like this and this. And then now that we're high, resolution is higher, I can go ahead and crank up my smooth brush again. And then there we go. So we'll kind of dig this in and then we'll pull this out. You just with clay build up. And now we've got our bag kind of going, hold down alt here and then we'll kind of dig this in around the neck seems like eh, maybe, maybe around here is where that noose will kind of cut in so now for the kind of floopy part let's see if we can't well, it'd be an easy way to do that quickly um, we can just take uh, hmm there's a couple different ways we could do that uh, we could do like we did on the genie where we cut a hole in a piece of cloth and we drop it over his head um, And then we can kind of bunch it up a little bit that might work uh, We could also draw out and then bridge if we want to be very precise that might be a little overkill um, But could be interesting. So let's do both Let's go in here and say uh, insert And let's grab a cylinder here. We're gonna take this cylinder and we're just gonna fit that 
around the head. We'll turn on transparency over here. Uh, ghost on or off shouldn't really matter, just whatever you're able to see a little bit better. And we'll kind of fit this to his head here. There we go. And then let's go in here to B. Uh, curve flat B, C, 8 is curve flat. And we'll just kind of go through here and kind of draw where these would kind of end up. So they would kind of be like, eh, let's make that brush size really small. Maybe not that small. There we go. So as we're dragging this out, if I was to go through here and tap off and then say split mass points, you would see that this is just kind of drawing the shape and then we can extrude this back and modify this to kind of give you that cloth kind of look. So we'll give this a shot and if it doesn't work, uh, there's a couple different options we can try. So we'll kind of go through here and it should be sticking to the underlying object. I don't think I have any stuff saved or any history saved here. Let's see here. Okay, and we'll just kind of wrap this around. I don't know that I need to have it match up. If it doesn't match up, it's okay. Um, it did stick together, so we can go ahead and just tap off of here and again say split mass points. And we'll go ahead and hide that cylinder. And then this will be kind of this geometry that's creating that kind of bunched fabric look. And we'll go through here. And you could have, again, in fact, you know, we could do it three ways. If this is kind of weird and it's starting to kind of roll around on itself, um, eh, let's go with this. Let's take the cylinder that we have. Let's just hit, um, let's make these this geometry a little bit more even. I'm going to go in here to poly group, group by normals, which is going to be under, again, your poly group menu way down here. And group by normals here. I'm going to do a zero mesh half depth size down to zero. Let's have X, tap X on your keyboard to turn X symmetry on. And we'll say keep group, smooth groups down to zero, zero mesh. And that'll give us nice even quads all the way around. So when I hit control D, um, We'll just have an, an even, even surface. So now we've got a nice little soft neck brace here. And then now what we can also do is we can turn off X symmetry and we can go through and we can use masking to go through here. Let's do control D one more time. Let's go up here to a geometry delete lower. And I'm gonna go through here and uh, we don't have to make it that intense as far as the curves here, but we can go ahead and just kind of draw in. So if that, that geometry didn't work for you, which in our case, I don't know, maybe I should have upped the resolution a bit for that IMM brush to have something a little more to grab onto. You can give this a shot. So we'll say Control Alt Tap to, uh, what's the word? To really kind of um, Control Alt Tap to sharpen up that mask. And then we'll go in here to Geometry, Edge Loop, Edge Loop Mask Border. And now we've got a nice clean cut where we have those. So Geometry Modified Topology, Delete Hidden, Zero Mesh, Half, uh, Keep Groups We Don't Need On. And then we'll just keep hitting half, and this will give us eventually a nice low res um, piece of geometry all the way around. Make sure there's no triangles in there. No, I think we're in good shape. So we got the same result um, just with another technique. So we'll go ahead and scale this out a little bit. Let's go ahead and reset it to the middle, and we'll just scale it out just a bit. So now, if we go through here and we say with our Z Modeler brush, we'll say extrude polygroup all. We'll just pull this in like so and then uh, flip our geometry. So something like um, display properties, flip. <laughs> and then uh, now we have kind of that bottom bunched thing. And we go ahead and scale this down a little bit. And we could even use a deformer maybe. Um, to kind of move this around. In fact, it's simple enough to where I think what we can do is I'm going to put a line right down the middle. Insert. Let's do multiple edge loops. Keep polygroup. We'll go ahead and make some nice quads down through here, and then tap on the bottom to make those the same. Um, if you did want this to be the exact same geometry, you can actually just take. Uh, so it's two polygroup or one polygroup for both sides. Let's go ahead and take this polygroup here. Do the polygroup auto groups. So anything that's not vert welded will get its own polygroup. We'll take this top one here. We'll say delete hidden, and then we can just extrude through this one. And again, we'll go ahead and do a flip. So now geometry is in the same at the top of the bottom. So if you did want to go through here and like, you know, use Q mesh um, polygroup all or something like that and pull through for holes or something like that, and you wanted to make that easier on you, I will hit D for dynamic. Um, you could do that. Um, I don't know that we'll need to do that just yet, but um, 
just in case you needed that. Uh, the other thing too is this blue uh, poly group here has an inside and an outside. I want those to be different, so we'll say group by normals. So now I can take this red poly group here, control to click the mask it, control tap to invert that mask, and now we can kind of take this and kind of raise it up a little bit and then squeeze it in or out just to kind of make that fit. And then we can bring this whole thing up here. And then that's around his neck, kind of cinched. Okay, something like that. Uh, and again, if we wanted to go through here and say, okay, let's insert single edge loop, let's hold down Alt and get rid of these, like so. And then, I'll, then we can go back in and insert multiple and just tap again. Then I'll remember our last setting here. So now we're kind of back to where we started. Okay, um, as far as using cloth sim on this, another thing you could do, we can take this top one here, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. Let's go in here to geometry dynamic, turn that on, and then we'll say, uh, let's go ahead and put a crease on here. So underneath uh, your crease menu, we're just going to crease so those outside edges get creased and that'll kind of hold their shape a little bit better. And then underneath dynamic up here, we have smooth sub, sub div, so it gets smoother. It's just a preview. So shift D to turn dynamic off and then D to turn it back on. And then we can go in here to thickness and we can just add some dynamic thickness on here. And that'll go kind of from the midline out both ways. And then uh, we can play around with this with like BC, oops, BC U, which is cloth nudge. Um, so we can kind of go through here. And again, this is actually working on very low res geometry. Um, so if I turn dynamic off, you're seeing, you know, we're kind of working on this geo. So uh, if we want, we can hit control D for um, an actual subdivision. So now we have, oops, we have an actual subdivision on top of a dynamic subdivision on top of dynamic subdivision with thickness. So that'll give us more resolution to kind of go through here and we can kind of play around uh, with this cloth and kind of simulate it uh, as needed. In fact, um, we could actually have it kind of drape on him. So if I, let's do this, let's take off our mask here and on the inside, uh, we don't have an inside poly group anymore, but um, we can say hold down control mask circle and we'll just kind of mask the inside here and then we can go in here to our dynamics menu and we can say gravity let's turn that gravity way down and then we just uh, turn on a collision volume so anything that's not selected will become a collision volume which in this case is his body and we can run the simulation and that'll kind of drape down um, so again just all things we can use as we move forward we don't have to use them all right now but just want to throw those out there Cool. Thanks for stopping by, John. You. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna do a. We'll do a scarecrow guy today. Just kind of in the blockout phase. He's kind of in the um, ugly baby phase right now, which I may not be able to help him out of, but we'll give it a shot. Uh, I think tracing by spotlight is kind of cheating. People consider tracing is kind of cheating in drawing. They told us this when I was a beginner in drawing. Um, yeah, I suppose uh, tracing, you're not going to really learn as much as you would copying. Copying, I wouldn't consider cheating. Copying, I would consider learning. Um, but as far as cheating, if you're using Spotlight to... Uh, in fact, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and match something. Um, and we'll discuss whether it's cheating or not. Uh, so I've got a uh, image right here that we may want to match. I'm just basically looking for like a proportions or something interesting that we may want to match uh, that could be worthwhile. This one's kind of fun. I like that one. Oh, that's rough. Um, let's try to look for it. I mean, there's nothing. It's kind of broad or kind of wide open <laughs> as far as how you want this to play out. Um, yeah, this one's fine. So let's go ahead and say um, save image as, and we'll throw this on our desktop. Oh, it's a WebP. Hold on just a second. Um, let's do this. Got it. Share file desktop. So for instance, what we're talking about is going in here to um, texture import desktop scarecrow 
texture. So we've imported the texture. I'm going to go back into texture, select the image, and hit plus. And that's going to throw it into spotlight. And you can use spotlight for all sorts of cool things. Uh, one of those is checking your proportion. So I'm going to take this intensity. And we'll take this intensity up just in case those pure blacks are going to white and making it tran or the pure blacks are going to transparent. We don't want that. We can drag to the right. And that'll make those pure blacks dark gray. And then we'll hit Z again. And we'll take this opacity down. So now we have uh, a head in here. And one quick and easy way I like to kind of make sure I can go back to this camera view I'm playing around with is underneath movie timeline show if I'm just doing one quick one off. Um, so we'll go ahead and set the head in here about where it would make sense. So we'll go ahead and just put it right in here. Eh, maybe match these. We'll match his eyes up. That makes sense, right? So the eyes are generally where they're going to be on the human. And then the rest of the bag head. I mean, I'm having a kind of hard time lining these up. You can also turn on perspective and play around with your draw uh, settings here. So if you want to change the focal length, you can do that. I don't know that I'll necessarily need to do that. I'll keep it simple, but something like this. And then I'll go ahead and just tap in my movie timeline menu. And in fact, you don't need this anymore. You can just turn off show so it's not up there. So now when I move this around, I can use my arrow keys uh, left and right, and then I'll snap it back. Um, in fact, you can set up multiple views, blah, blah, blah. Um, again, I don't know if I've had, let me go back here, there it is. Uh, so uh, I'm trying to figure out the best way, what might be the most useful. Let's go to created playlists. Um, all the previous stuff, all the previous, uh, live streams we've done. If you look for the big blue genie, um, these are all the previous episodes on here, but if you want the instructional stuff, like anything I shout out, like, Hey, spotlight, what are you talking about? Um, you can go in here and you can type in, oops, let's make this window a little bit bigger. You can go in here and say spotlight. And that'll take you right to any spotlight videos. Now, I think I've done, I think spotlights had enough updates to where it could be in like ZBrush 2021. What's new might have some stuff in there. ZBrush 2020, what's new, 2019, what's new. Um, also my ArtStation page here where you got the folded down corners. So there's the intro and then all of these what's new series is just all ZBrush functionality. So you can go through here and you'd be like 2017, what's new? Click up here and there's a ton of stuff in here. So if there's anything in particular you would want to learn about from those years. This is 2021. Did I do 2017? 2021.7, sorry. <laughs> it's not 2017. Uh, in fact, it only goes back to 4.8 and then 2018. Um, so anyway, in here you could go through and look for individual functionality of stuff from that year. So anyway, um, yeah, so there's that. Just for as far as resources, if you get kind of bogged down and words you don't know what, what they mean or what we're doing, you can go and check those out. Uh, but anyway, is this cheating to go in here and say, okay, so I've got this here and I want to snap it forward and then I want to kind of match this. Um, in this case, I don't know that I consider it cheating. We still have X symmetry our turn on, by the way. Um, I'll go ahead and turn off our underlying head. It's really just I use this to keep me honest and ideally I should be able to have, you know, this image up on my other screen over here. And then I should just be able to be in ZBrush and just kind of match, you know, whatever those shapes are and whatever those proportions are. I should just be able to kind of look over there and be like, okay, yeah, that's generally the proportion I'm going for. You're just using a reference, right? Um, maybe pop those cheekbones out a little bit, et cetera, et cetera. And honestly, we, even when I'm using spotlight, I'll do both. If I'm trying to match something, uh, you know, I'll have one up on the other screen and I'll have one in my spotlight that I can just go in here and just be like, okay, am I, am I really there? Um, this website's doing something weird. Let me go back to just eh, get rid of that. There we go. Um, so you can kind of do both. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't consider that cheating necessarily. Um, especially even translating something from 2D to 3D you know, and you want to match something pretty precisely. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like translating 2D to 3D is not a simple task. Uh, sometimes it's simpler than others, but depending on what you're making. But um, I'd be hard pressed to call that cheating if you're trying to match something. If you're trying to like tr translate a concept into 3D, there's so much interpretation that goes on there that like bringing in spotlight for a sanity check um, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't call that cheating me personally. Anyways, maybe that's cause I use that technique. So I wouldn't, I would be less inclined to call it cheating. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. That's something you guys would have to determine for yourselves. 
Um, so we have this here. Okay, so we've got this blocked out. And uh, just really quickly, just to kind of fill in this space, we could go ahead and do, and I should probably be saving some of these out as different images. Let's go to open image and new tab, because there's a few I kind of want to step through. Open image and new tab. Just to like side views and front views and three quarter views and back views. Open image and new tab. That I'll just be cycling through just to kind of have just a few things up so I can have some quick back and forth reference. Okay. Um, okay. So now uh, the stitches over the face. Uh, we did IMM brushes when we first started, when we were dragging off that kind of loopy cloth IMM. Uh, for this one, I don't know, because they kind of stretch straight across. I might just go into my... Um, so I have a uh, cylinder in mind. You can go in here to BI Brush Insert IMM Primitives. Hit M and grab like an insert cylinder and just pull off and then pull forward. That'll kind of give you a thin cylinder in here. We'll go ahead and turn off X symmetry, by the way. Um, actually, let's go ahead and say Split Mass Points. That's under your Subtool Split menu here. And now we've got the cylinder in its own subtool here so you can go through here and uh, oops did I not turn off X symmetry there we go yeah X symmetry off um, again we'll say split mass points we'll go ahead and delete this bad one here there we go so now he's smoking a cigarette so we'll take this here I'm gonna hold down alt and then scale it along this axis here and then we'll go ahead and uh, plug this in, hit W, control, drag off, make a copy, and you can just go through here and make crisscrosses of uh, cylinders and call it a day. Now these cylinders are kind of not super optimized cylinders, so that's where I would go into my custom menu. I think I've got one, uh, my custom IMM brush here. I think I've got a bend, I use this for bend curve for hair, um, but it's a little bit more quadded out. And again, if you hold down Alt along an axis, it'll scale just on the, those two axes and it won't do a uniform scale. Um, so there's that method. And if you're going to be doing this a lot, like in this instance here, it's a lot of crisscrossing over. Uh, you can just do this. Let's say split mass points here. You can say, okay, I want one. And again, if you want to use spotlight, you can, you can match these exactly if you'd like. Um, so we've got this here. Oops, grab this one. There we go. We've got this one here and it's a little bit thick. Instead of going here and like alt uh, scaling down, I might just go into my deformation menu and do a deflate just to kind of thin this out a little bit here. So we've got one here and then we'll kind of rotate this around a little bit here. And then if we hold down control and drag out a copy and then rotate, let's go to unmatch mesh center, that little teardrop icon, rotate this one back. So that's generally, you know, the crisscross pattern that we're looking for here. And then uh, we'll go ahead and double check here, and uh, that's fine. So now we've got this. We can hold down Control now on this one and Control drag out a copy. And now we've got you know a bunch of. Let's go ahead and reset this here. So now we've got a bunch of those crisscross uh, patterns on here. Now these are very even. Looking through my looking through my reference here. I mean, I guess that's fine. It's a, it's a look. It's a certain look there. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll go ahead and fill this up a little bit. I'm actually going to go back in here to this head. We'll turn the X symmetry back on, and then I'm going to pull this forward just a tiny bit, and we'll go ahead and alt. So I'm alt tapping to kind of switch between subtools. So I don't have to go through there and hunt hunt them down. And we'll kind of even these out a little bit. Maybe scale them in just a hair. Okay, and then now that we've got multiple, we can control drag off another copy. They may be getting smaller. Uh, now, if we're getting uniformly smaller in this case, it's actually going to thin them out as well. So in that case, you may want to go back into your deformation menu, inflate, and just run a small inflate. You can actually do incremental here. So inflate maybe 0.2 just to fatten them back up a little bit just so they match. They're made of the same thread. They're just not as... Um, thick or they'll still be the same thickness but not the same um, size so we have this one here and in fact we can even do this we can say uh, split mass points on this one so it's on its own sub tool we can do a mirror and weld across the x-axis and then we can just use this as our non-symmetrical middle if we want so we can kind of fill this in even faster so now we've basically got uh, our stitches here and these stitches you know they're going to go up to the top so you don't see them 
And then Alt tap here and move these back down. We can even turn on X symmetry for these if we'd like, since these are a separate subtool here. There we go. So we've we've kind of got stitches going in his mouth. And we can change these. Let's go ahead and turn off Dynamesh for these. We could go ahead and merge these down. Underneath your subtool merge menu here, you can merge down. And that's one way we go and go about making stitches. Again, we may change those up a little bit. And I'm noticing in some of my reference here, I don't really see it uh, that well in this one. But in here, you can kind of see he's got kind of a emaciated skull face um, there. So let's go ahead and pull that in. Let's go ahead and hit the comma key. Go into your tool menu. And there's a uh, Ryan Kingsline anatomy model. Let's go ahead and double click that. Hit the comma key. And we got the skeleton auto selected, so we can go into solo mode. You can see we got a skull right here. Uh, let's go ahead. We don't need all these muscles. We'll say delete other, just to kind of clear our scene out. If you do it, if it does a a quick save, uh, it'll save every all the things you have open. It'll save those as the project. So we don't want to have a heavy scene going. So we'll just delete other. And this whole skull, I'm going to take. So Control Shift. Uh, we'll grab select lasso. We're going to grab the whole front part of the head. Control Shift A, and then um, eh, we can do delete hidden. And now we just have a skull here. Um, if you want to, you can go into Deformation Unify, and that'll just kind of throw it down the middle of your scene here. And then we can just go in here and say Append this uh, skull here. Go into solo mode here, and if we select the skull, go into solo mode. Oh, you can see it's very tiny. Let's do another Deformation Unify. That'll kind of make it... Oh, okay. So he's basically one unit in ZBrush, so we'll scale the skull down. That's one way to bring it in. You can also, in that skull file, say B, create insert mesh new, and then hop back in here. And then with the male ZBrush here, we can say, hey, just drag that skull right on here as an insert mesh brush, and then say split mass points. And then now we can just say scale this up. And now we've got some teeth in here we can kind of play around with. So let's match the skull to the head here, yay. And then now that we've got the male here, uh, we can make him, we can kind of dial him back a little bit. So if you hold down shift, I'm gonna turn down my Z intensity again. We can kind of start pulling this back and giving him a little bit more of a zombified look here. And uh, yeah, that should work. Another thing too, is he does have those kind of wide open eyes. So let's go ahead and dial some of that in. I'm going to kind of open his eyes a little bit and then maybe even go in here with like a Z sphere. Split mass points, W move it back with our gizmo, kind of straighten those out just a bit. And that can be the start of that look there. So we've got flesh, we've got bone, we've got eyeballs. Um, these teeth might look a little bit small, um, and we can we can fudge this. It's you know the head, the skull is you know shouldn't be that far off, you know. So we might consider saying like, okay, this is a little more like it. Um, skull doesn't have to match exactly. It's a different skull for a different person, so we can kind of fudge it a little bit here. It's not quite as wide. And then uh, as far as the teeth themselves, if really all we need out of this is the teeth because the rest of it's kind of zombie flesh, we can hold down Control Shift, grab a little piece of these teeth, Control Shift A, Control Shift Alt here, grab all those. So basically, well, we can do, here's two things we can do. We can actually grab a big piece of the skull and the jaw, Control Shift A, Control Shift Drag, Geometry Modified Topology, Delete Hidden, or if you want the skull just to kind of stick around, just do Split Hidden and then turn it off. So now we have the teeth in here. Let's make these a little bit nicer. Let's hit Control D just to subdivide and then maybe um, deformation inflate maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.1 just to kind of scale them up a little bit. We'll do Control D one more time. And in fact, if you want not triangulated decimated geometry, we can just say, is this symmetrical? Geometry modified topology mirroring well across the X. Let's turn off. Let's say delete lower. Now, it may weld those together if they're close enough. I'm not sure if it grabbed them or not. I'm not too concerned. So we have X symmetry turned on. Let's say zero mesh half depth size down to zero. We'll zero mesh this, and that'll give us new geometry. Might be a little easier to control later. And uh, there we go. So now we'll let's say Alt. Um, since his head, his fleshy head, isn't dynameshed, uh, it's geometry. We'll go ahead and um, we'll just kind of move this around. So we'll kind of 
I said, okay, let's hold down Alt and we'll sculpt this in a little bit. <clears throat> this will kind of act as our head and our gums maybe, or just kind of lips. Um, yeah, these might be a little far in. Let's pull these out just a tad here. And on this one, we'll go back. Let's take this undo slider. Yeah, we might need some gums. It's not horrible. Uh, also, if you, you see we're moving the top lip and the bottom lip at the same time, let's go in here to brush, auto masking, and I'm gonna turn on topological. We'll change that range down to like 1.5. And then now we can kind of move this upper and lower lip a little bit separately here. All right, a little bit of smooth. Um, and like I said before, we can we can throw some gums in there, some rudimentary gums that are just kind of geometry, but we'll wait and see what we actually see. Um, in fact, these eyes, I'm going to space them out just a little bit more. And again, that I think that falls within the range of, I'm not going too far out of the scope of what a human might have in this case. I'm also going to thin him out a little bit. So a little bit of shift to smooth. We're going to kind of emaciate his skull just a bit. So we'll go ahead and say, uh, and in fact, we can use this as a guide if we have the skull still sitting in here. We'll turn on transparency with ghost off. And then we can see like, okay, uh, where the bones are, that's not gonna change that much. So you've got the, let's just go in here. You've got this orbit right here. You got the nasal bone right here. You've got the the cheekbone and the zygomatic arch right here. And then the, uh, the jaw muscle. And then this is all filled in with muscle. But again, if you're losing a lot of fat and muscle and just skin and bones, um, those are the places that are going to kind of stick around. So, for example, um, we would have our cheekbones, but then this might be, let's turn down our Z intensity a bit here. Our cheekbones might be kind of protruding through here. And then our, I don't know, you you probably wouldn't have a monster masseter in there. You know, your jawbone would be kind of popped a little bit here. And, uh, you know, again, just not a ton of fat left on the face. And then your orbit, you know, might have... A little more pronounced here, so your and then this right here, your temporal line might be a little more pronounced. So again, we're just kind of shrinking the skull down a little bit, and um, I don't know, I'm not sure what his ear situation would be underneath that bag, but probably doesn't matter too much. We can just fold those back as needed. So got this going, and then now, because we started with his normal head on this, we can actually start bringing this stuff in, and this I think matches a little bit better, you know kind of pronounces that emaciated look. And also a little bit more room for the eyes. And the nose too, uh, that's not gonna be, you know, cartilage isn't gonna be shrunk or anything, but if it is messing around with the overall look that you're going for, we can go back into the head here and we can say, you know what, let's just, I'm going to back this off. We'll give him a little bit of a zombie nose. Again, this nasal bone isn't going to diminish. So that's going to stay out there. And then also the ears, you know, we can kind of push these back again. Because again, even if you had a bag on your head, it would mush your ears back. So we can go ahead and have that do that for us. And then um, I guess we'll go ahead and make sure that encapsulates his skull here. There we go. So really, probably what I should have done is done his head first and emaciated it, and then went through and done his um, cloth bag here. But okay, I think we're in better shape. So we've got this, we're gonna have cloth with tears and holes on it. Uh, we've got this <laughs> kind of looks like a clown, uh, but we can go ahead and fix that real quick, I think. And then we've got the noose, and then on his body here, we'll go ahead and duplicate this off again. And uh, let's see. So we've duplicated this entire body off. I'm gonna go through here, we're gonna say Control Shift, go to our slice, and I'm gonna say, okay, we need, he's got kind of a suit on, so I'm gonna slice here, and then slice at the end of his wrists here, and then across his waist here. 
So now if I say, give me the red part, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. Let's do a quick mirror across the X, mirror and weld, deformation, mirror across the X, and then geometry modified topology, mirror and weld across the X. X symmetry is turned on. We'll just do a zero mesh half, adapt the size down to zero, give us some new geometry. And now we've got kind of a shirt. Now, same deal. I should have done this. <laughs> he's got kind of a, he's kind of beefy. And I don't know that the scarecrow is overly beefy. So we can go ahead and emaciate him. We can do a shrink, but I would caution you against shrinking the fingers and the feet. Most of that is just bone, right? Not muscle in there. And the head as well. So the rest of this, with all of this unmasked, we can say, uh, maybe just do a slight deflate. Just kind of shrink him up a little bit. And then you can go back in here and, uh, you know, move stuff around, but that's eh, not too bad. And then a little bit of smooth brush too, you know, not a ton of muscle definition maybe. So just a little bit of smooth, a little bit of move, a little bit of deflate, uh, just for a slightly different body, body type here. And his neck, still got that quite a broad neck here. So we'll go ahead and smooth that back down. Okay. Again, different body type here. And um, we don't even need to deflate this. This will just be cloth at the end of the day that we can go through. And we talked a, a little bit about. Um, let's go ahead and just, let me see, what does he look like? Okay, good. That's all just like one burlap sack. Oh, but it does, in some of these, it does have, you know, that'll be a little bit easier. Let's do this. Let's put these into two separate um, objects here. So I'm going to kind of slice through here. I'm going to say um, split hidden and then do a quick uh, mirror, mirror and weld. And then on the arm here, we'll just do a quick mirror and weld. So now we have this one, which we can say, hey, give us a little bit of a vest look. And we'll kind of push these out a little bit. In fact, let's zero mesh half again. Just need a nice, simple burlap shape, basically. I'm going to go ahead and I don't like working, if I can help it, I don't like working thin. Uh, so what I'll go through here and do is say, uh, close convex hole, just hover over an edge, spacebar with Z modeler brush selected, close convex hole, we'll just close that off, close that off, close that off, control shift tap, control W, make them all one poly group here. And uh, I think I can get away with not having just thin cloth. Um, so that'll be kind of our vest look. And then for our arms here, um, that can just be, it looks like he's got them kind of rolled up a little bit. Um, and there's also gloves, which are kind of cool. Maybe we'll, I don't know, we'll stick with that. So anyway, this can be uh, a shirt. Now, uh, if we wanted to, let's hold down shift and turn off everything but this in the body. You can see I do have the cloth kind of, um, let's also turn off dynamic here. The cloth just kind of around his body. So we can do, let's go ahead and get rid of these triangles. We'll just do another zero mesh half. So we have some tubes around his arms here. Um, we can collapse this here. So if we do dynamics, uh, recalculate the collision volume to this new emaciated body, um, gravity will turn on very low and also we'll do maybe a contract with a low amount. I think it might work. Uh, and then we run the simulation, it uh, <laughs> contracts around his body. Um, so contract and X, Y, and Z, we don't want to do Y. I'm going to turn off contract in the Y direction and see if that doesn't help. No, it still wants to. Okay, let's help this out a little bit. Let's hold down control. I want a mask at the top. If it was front and back, it wouldn't be that big a deal. It would work actually pretty good. And if it was all one piece, it would actually work pretty good. But since it's just the tube arms, it's kind of an interesting. Let's also turn off gravity here. Um, maybe deflate. Let's turn these back on. Hmm. We don't want to expand or inflate. Collision volume, run simulation. I'm trying to think. Because we did a whole body and contracted it in X, Y, and Z, and that worked fine. But because it's not a closed mesh, it seems to be having a little bit of a harder time. Um, well. We can do this. Uh, so we have this. Let's go ahead and deflate this down so it's a little bit closer to the body. Uh, and then with these two showing, go ahead and move these out just a little bit. 
I don't know why I'm going over this. It's not like you necessarily need this for the cloth, but I don't know, just in case it's useful for somebody. Um, so with both of these showing, we can go over here and we can do a sub tool. Um, not remesh, uh, project, and then we do project all. That'll project this geometry uh, to whatever's showing. And now we've got um, more skin tight uh, arms. Then we'll go through a Q mesh, probably group all. I'm gonna hold down shift. And instead of inflating, we can just pull along that surface normal and inflate those up a little bit. So turn all this back on. So we've got arms here, uh, cloth. I'm gonna go ahead and cap these as well. You can keep them thin, I don't feel like it. So close convex again here. Close convex, control shift, control W, make that all one poly group. And now uh, again, just to make sure, I'm gonna go in here and say crease PG, hit control D. So we're getting actual subdivisions on here and we'll go ahead and turn off our collision volume. So if we go through here with like our cloth brush, so B, C, uh, there's cloth hook, which is kind of fun to kind of pull cloth around, but it really, you know, does a number on that cloth here. We also have deflate and contract, we'll go ahead and turn those off. So here we are with our cloth brush. It's doing too much. Um, you can also try cloth nudge, but you can also go in here to thick skin, turn that on, change the amount that it's going to um, affect our underlying mesh. So now if I hit control D, we'll turn thick skin off and on again to reset it. You can now kind of pull in um, like compression wrinkles along the top here. You can kind of just kind of push this in and then um, if you want to, you can even hang this off the geometry. So again, if we hold down shift and turn these off and say, hey, give me a collision volume with a little bit of gravity. Um, you can run the simulation. Oh, it's a U and U. And if you're gonna do this, take that inflate down quite a bit. And then, um, cause that's going to give you kind of a cushion around your uh, mesh here. So now if we run the simulation, yeah, it should kind of stick on him. And of course we need to make it so it doesn't fall down. So let's take this mask lasso and just kind of mask it here and then just run the simulation. So that I kind of hang, hang the geometry down. So again, run simulation and turn it off and then we'll turn off our collision volume. And then we'll go back in here to thick skin and then uh, brush cloth hook, I suppose, or, you know, brush cloth nudge or any brush really. Uh, in fact, let's do that. So we can go through here, we can hold down uh, alt and we can say, let's turn off thick skin. So in a solo mode. So if this is hanging, let me go ahead and get rid of this effective geometry. We just isolate these and let's do a uh, polish by features just to kind of even that geometry out. So underneath here, we can say, okay, this cloth here is kind of hanging down. So we can kind of dial that in, you know, just kind of cloth. Uh, so it's kind of hitting. Let's go ahead and smooth this out just a little bit. In fact, we can just do a polish by features. There we go. So this cloth is kind of hanging down from here. It's kind of, you know, on his elbow and then it'll kind of drape. So draping cloth on the bottom here. And then on the top, we might have compression. So we can go through here and we can just kind of sculpt in some compression wrinkles on here. So let's kind of go through and add it. You might be thinking, well, why don't you use the cloth sim? We will use the cloth sim. I'm just kind of indicating the kind of wrinkles that I want on the cloth. And in fact, if we need more resolution, just hit control D uh, and that's going to do a geometry divide here. And so now you can see a little bit better, like, okay. Uh, and also let's go in here and turn on our lazy radius. So tap L on your keyboard, go into stroke lazy mouse and just crank that lazy radius up. So we'll get slightly smoother strokes here. So again, draping the cloth and draping the cloth this way, like so, and then draping the cloth this way and then another drape through here. And then on the top here, we'll have compression wrinkles. So compression, just little Z's and N's here. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. I'm certainly not perfect. Um, and we could throw this into Marvelous Designer if we wanted to, depends on how far you wanna go with it, but just for kind of a block out purposes and just indicating what's going on with the cloth, you know, draping and compression. And then if you wanna go back in on here, uh, again, we did like brush cloth hook. 
So if we go through here and start pulling this around, you'll start getting those wrinkles. Again, if you want to limit the amount, just go in here to thick skin, turn that on. You can dial up that thickness. So now you're kind of, it's going to make it so you're kind of pushing cloth across. If that's too wrinkly for you, you can go into dynamics and turn the firmness up or, and or, you can go in here and change your resolution down so it has less geometry to work with. So now when we're going through here, we can go through and kind of emphasize our compression wrinkles along the top here and even our drape wrinkles here. And then for if you want to use any brush to enhance these wrinkles, for example, like I do like to use a pinch brush, just go in here to brush elasticity, crank that up to, you don't have to crank it all the way up to 100, but this basically turns on cloth simulation for any brush. So while I'm pinching, it'll go through and run the cloth simulation, you know, while I'm using it. I still do have thick skin on, so if I pinched a lot, it would eventually stop affecting the surface. If I turn that off, you'll see I can just keep going and going. So, you know, use that to your advantage if you need to. So anyway, we have compression wrinkles, we have draping wrinkles, um, that type of thing. And we'll go back through here and we'll just kind of use our move brush without any cloth stimulation. We'll make sure we're not going through our arm here. Although remember, you know, if you're making your arm and then you put cloth on top of it and then your cloth arm is too thick, then maybe your underlying arm needs to be a little thinner, a little more emaciated. Um, use that to your advantage. Do whatever looks right for the final result. Don't do, get too caught up in, you know, how that's going to look. So, yeah, there's that. This is all blocked out. This probably needs to change. Um, we'll try another option for this. So we'll do, uh, if you watch back through the video, there's some options to kind of create that. We'll do one more, like we did for our genie. So we'll give that a shot. So I'm going to turn off everything but the body here, and this body doesn't have geometry. So from the top, um, I'm just going to grab a, I don't know, a cylinder, I guess. And we'll say split mass points underneath your subtool split menu. And I'm going to do a quick group by normals, control shift tap, just this green one here. We'll say delete hidden. And let's go to unmatch mesh center with X turned off temporarily. So we'll go ahead and put this right around here. And let's go in here and say insert single edge loop right around the neck here. And then I'm going to say poly group poly loop here. Get rid of this. Delete hidden. We'll say insert multiple edge loops keep poly group. There we go. And then now we just have cloth here. So let's go back to our dynamics. We'll turn on collision volume. Let's inflate it just a bit. We have gravity turned on, we'll run the simulation. And now we've got just kind of cloth draped around his neck. Um, of course we can mask this if we want to. And then also we need a little more resolution, I think. So I'm gonna hit Control D. Well, first let's do a crease. So it'll crease our open edges. We'll hit Control D a couple times and then we'll run the simulation. And that can kind of be it kind of draped and then we'll turn off collision volume. Thank you. And so now we'll say uh, brush cloth a good way I guess we'll do this so we'll say X symmetry turn back on let's do a quick polish by features and we'll kind of just go through here and give it that frilly look it's not going to be as controlled as the other methods we used earlier but that's not necessarily a bad thing because I think the controlled version made it look like um, those things medieval paintings used to wear the little neck frills I guess you'd call them it's a little too much. Uh, so now we can go back into our pinch brush. Again, we still have um, a lot of simulation iterations turned on. So we can go through here and just kind of fold this cloth. You know, kind of bunch it up a little bit. If you need more resolution, again, just go in here and hit divide again. Um, I don't know, and we'll kind of play with that a little bit. So a little bit of a different look here. And then this shirt. I kind of want to do the same thing with this shirt. Should I bother or should I just go in here manually and stick it closer? Yeah, I don't know. We'll play around with it. But anyway, kind of get those into place and we'll take this and this uh, head as well. We kind of did a Dynamesh block out, which is totally fine, um, but it's going to definitely need some help here. 
and also we need to kind of indicate you know where the noose is going to go and where that's going to kind of cut through and play kind of a major part in this design so okay let's do that real quick sorry i'll look over in the comments in just a second um <laughs> probably missing a ton of questions uh sometimes some days i'm better about that some days i'm just not so split mass points here's our uh, and you you probably don't have this in your custom thing here but you can go into the palette and you can just grab a uh, ring 3d drag that on your canvas hit f to frame it and then go down here to initialize and say uh i don't know let's say like 8 and 16 maybe give you a decent ring go in here and you can just append this to your other one it'll turn it into a make poly mesh 3d automatically or you can hit make poly mesh 3d and append it or you can say uh, b create insert mesh new i'm gonna do a quick save real quick hop back in here and then you have an insert mesh brush with a ring on it so now this isn't going to be my rope this is just going to be a path for my rope to kind of sit on so we're just going to make sure that this kind of sits how we like and maybe even go through here and kind of pull this end down a little bit like so that'll kind of be our path and then it's going to spiral around here so in order to do a spiral or a helix we'll go in here to helix initialize um, radius off Z offset what am I looking for here oh that don't work yeah that could be a noose so let's go in here and say make poly mesh 3d again let's just go from the side B create insert mesh brush new hop back in here and say okay you get a noose split mass points okay so we have a path for this and then as far as the rest of this uh this will go around that'll be a rope this will all be rope and then i don't know it just kind of has hanging rope here so let's go back to our curb brush we used earlier and we'll just say um this one really doesn't want to stick let's look at that let's look at those settings here stroke curve bend start bend in let's turn on snap Okay, that's a little bit better. Um, yeah, and that'll just be our path for the two ends of this rope, I guess. Good enough. So we'll go ahead and say split mass points. We'll move this out so we can see it. And again, we're just kind of blocking out where things need to go. And honestly, like this stuff, I'm, I'm gonna change this anyway, so it's not a huge deal. Now, how do we turn this into rope? So let's go ahead and hit control. This is, these are kind of elongated. Let's hit control D and then say delete lower. Uh, let's do one more time. Control D, delete lower. Control D, delete lower. I'm just basically looking for slightly even, evener, evener quads here. Let's do this. Um, poly group, poly loop. So again, I'm just looking for that path. So I'm going to say here is my path with control shift delete hidden and then insert single edge loop and we're going to say alt and alt and then we'll go back in here to poly group so now we have a poly group path that i want to pass that rope around um i do have a rope brush i guess i can show you how to make that real quick let's go out of edit mode let's say quick save and this is a, a beautiful rope brush but it'll work so we'll go in here we'll grab a poly mesh 3d um Think this will work let's go in here to dynamic turn down smooth subdivision go in here say micro poly on only this time we're going to steal so here's some wire in here that i think will work we're going to hold down control and tap uh, or is it alt and tap alt tap this wire yeah that'll shoot this wire out here so now we just kind of have, have uh, repeated braids so if i hold down control and drag out and then let go of control you'll see this is the result i'm looking for just a repeating kind of ropey kind of look so I just basically stole that by hitting alt in my micro poly I only need one of them so we're gonna grab this one here control shift a so control shift drag over these pieces control shift a geometry modified topology delete hidden now I basically have let's say control W make it all one poly group we have a repeating um, 
piece of geometry that will just repeat. So let's turn this into an IMM brush. So let's hit B, create insert mesh new. Now we have an IMM out of this. So let's turn it into a curve brush. So with that brush that you just created, go in here to brush, curve, um, nope, stroke, <laughs> curve. Uh, turn curve mode on. And then now this thing will be uh, put along a curve. It's not quite welding these things together, as you can see. So let's go down here to our brush modifiers. We'll turn on weld points. We'll turn off tri parts. We don't need that. And then now when I drag out this brush, it should weld these together. Um, looks like it's actually crossing over a little bit. Uh, oh, ah, this has a hole in it. Okay, so when you steal that geometry, make sure these are welded. You can go through here and you can say stitch two points, U to U, and stitch those up. That way there's it can only have one hole in the top, one hole in the bottom. Once you've done all that and you've got a decent brush going, you can save that brush. You can go in here to brush, save as, and then I usually throw it into ZBrush 2022 in this instance, ZBrushes, uh, IMM in here, and then just save it as whatever, rope. Then you can hit your comma key to bring up your light box. Go in here to brush your underscore IMM folder that you may have had in there if you created it. And then in here, I've got two rope brushes. I've got one that's, uh, or at least I thought I did. Oh yeah, I did. Uh, so here's rope tighter, which is basically just a scaled down rope that has a little bit more wind to it. And then here's just a simple rope. So again, just the same brush we talked about making just turned into a repeating brush. So now we can go back here with our new curve brush and we have this path again. So underneath stroke, turn on polygroups, frame mesh under your curve functions and then tap here and that'll kind of just, oh, turn off X symmetry as well. So you don't get two ropes on top of each other and that'll give us our rope along that path. If you need to change the path, obviously, just go through here, hit E, We'll scale this path in a little bit so it's a little closer to his head. And again, you can just frame that exact same deal with this. Make sure that this, let's go to a mesh mesh center here. This is where you want it. This is the basic size and shape that you want. This is the number of turns that you want. And then you can just turn this into, let's do a quick uh, group by normals underneath your poly group menu, control shift tap, just the pink, delete hidden. And then again, we'll just say, give me a Poly loop. Um, oops, turn off X symmetry here. Poly loop here, and then another poly loop here. I'm just, you tap a poly loop and then tap Alt to get a new color. Control Shift tap between those to grab them both. And then now you have, uh, again, just a curve function. Frame your mesh with your poly group. Hit B to grab your rope brush, and then just tap. Uh, so if you tap and it's too small, just tap S on your keyboard to make that bigger. And then now you can have like a, a coiled rope, um, kind of a noose look. So let's go ahead and tap off to get rid of that, I tap away from the curve to get rid of that curve here. Uh, or you can go in here to curve functions delete and then um, go through here and inflate this up, you know, whatever. And then hit D for dynamic and that'll give you kind of that coiled rope look. Uh, that one needs a little bit more love. So we'll just keep that around a geometry around and we'll play with that. So we have a path, a path, and then um, same deal. These can be paths that so you can just pass that rope down. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of those. We don't need those just yet, but that's the overall idea. Okay. So going back up here to the top, I'm sorry if I missed anything. Um, okay, okay. Uh, would it be possible to move transpose by units? Yes. So, uh, for example, if you hit W and then hit Y, you have these little notches on there. If you go into, well, you need you need kind of a unit, uh, what, what you want your units to be set to. Um, so, for example, one unit you could do in this case would be head units. So if we hit Y and then say, okay, I want... Let's go ahead and move this back. So from the chin to the oop, to the top of the head, I want this to be one head unit. Just go in here to preferences, transpose units, and set the calibration distance to one. And then we want to say, okay, I want maybe half heads to show up. So we want 
two minor ticks per one major tick, uh, which is basically you know one head unit. So now we've set our transpose to be one head unit with a little half unit in between. So now I can measure our proportions here. So I'm gonna go from the top of the head to the bottom of the feet here. And we've got one head, two, three, four, five, six, seven, a half and a little bit. So he's seven and a half heads high and just a tiny bit more. Um, all, all the major landmarks fall where they should. You know, there's the chest line, navel or the top of the pelvis here, um, crotch, and then halfway down the leg. Uh, for heroic proportions, you might have this a little closer to the knee. The legs tend to be a little bit longer. In fact, you could even change that if you wanted. You say mask this out, uh, control tap to invert that. And then you can say, okay, from the crotch to the bottom of the leg, we want that to be, you know, one head, two head, three head, four heads. So just say shift and just scooch that out just a little bit from that anchor point. And now our legs are, uh, so one, two, three, four. And then presumably we didn't change the head proportion. The head's still the same. So now we have an eight head high proportioned, heroic proportion character using transpose units. Um have a deadline and save time with tracing. That's the right thing to do. So yeah, and like down here, um, <laughs> stealing someone's model is cheating. Yeah, you don't want to steal somebody's model. I mean, I did steal this one, but it's a base mesh. I don't know that it's going to be integral to what I would need. It's basically just like, I just need a human. I don't want, I mean, it's good practice for sure. Like go through and like make a sphere and then pull it out or go into Z-spheres and you know, draw out your Z-spheres and make a human. There's nothing wrong with that. For sure, do it if you don't do that a lot. Um, one thing I would caution against is when I did that scale, I kept the fingers, so now his fingers are a little bit elongated, so be careful of that. So don't do that, but... Uh, let's see here. Uh, <laughs> it's Nightmare Fuel. Um, tomorrow, I'll fall announcement, ZBrush. I have no idea. I'm kind of out of the loop, so uh, I'll be just as surprised as everyone else. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to say anyways, but I don't know. Um, <laughs> I won't give away any tells. Um, cool. So let me. Get, you should hang some cows, uh, crow skulls off the uh, cow. Just my random lurker idea. Let's do it. So let me. I need to know what a crow skull looks like. Oh, that's cool looking. Like a little Sandman look. Let's go into images here. This is a good example of something that just to make my life a little bit easier uh, I'm gonna say save image as we're gonna throw this right on our desktop oh man everything's so weird nowadays all little image formats um, that's fine but just okay so um, open image a new tab side views are useful ooh top views are super useful open image a new tab here so give me a second to throw these in here save image as desktop Okay, top view, save image as, yay. So now, uh, let's go ahead and do a quick save. That's nine on your keyboard. Let's go ahead and edit mode. And really quickly, we can do a, uh, let's do this. Let's go in here to Z plugin. I have a Z plugin here um, that is called what? Ref so we already showed how you can bring in a texture and apply it to a movie timeline and then show that. Um, What was I looking for? Ref switcher. Uh, so that's easy enough. This one is actually cooler in that you can load in multiple views. This in this case up to 10 and maybe even more. Um, and then you can just swap out full sized images. Uh, in our case, we don't need to do that, but definitely look that up if that sounds interesting to you. It's really cool. Um, in our case, what we can do is I can just go in here to import. And since it's only a couple, I can say, okay, load up those images, go in here and uh, texture, we're gonna select this image, add to our spotlight. Uh, we don't need this one anymore, so we'll just delete it out of our spotlight here. And oh, I wish I could, that's yeah, fine. So we got the spotlight in here and then texture, we'll grab the side view, add that to spotlight. Um, and then we'll flip this one around so it matches. We'll say flip our mirror horizontally. And then the back of the head, we're gonna go and say, okay, this is the back of the head they line up. And then I'm gonna scale this one out so that it lines up, the beak generally lines up here, and then we'll just move this down. So those generally line up correct. Uh, so now we can go through here and we can say, let's drop the opacity down for both of these. And we're good to go, so we have a sphere, edit, 
um, x across x symmetry make poly mesh 3d and in fact you know what I'm just gonna hop right into Dynamesh that's gonna be under your geometry uh, Dynamesh uh, way down here sorry Dynamesh it's all in my custom menu here and then we'll say uh, I'll just Dynamesh is fine in fact maybe even a little lower resolution super simple I want to know where the front of my object is so I'm gonna turn on the floor Z forward is where I like to have the front of my objects. So we're going to pull out a little beak. Yep. There we go. And then, uh, so now we have the back of the cranium. We have the front of the face. We have the top here, which is sitting on top of our floor. So we're in good shape. I know where these things go. So here is my cranium with my beak direction. So I'm going to go again, go in here to timeline show. We're going to drag this dot off. We don't need it it's from previous thing. So tap in here, that's going to store that view, and then we're going to go to the side, drop this down to the side of the cranium here, um, and then we'll say make another one. So now I can just hit my arrow keys and cycle between those two dots and just snap back. I don't need to see this anymore, so we'll just turn off movie timeline show. So really quickly, and again, I don't consider this cheating, I'm just using my reference, right? Um, I could use my observational skills, but I don't really trust them. So we're going to go through here and we're just going to make a quick uh, skull shape here. And then again, we'll just drop down and then we'll just dive in there and we'll kind of do this view. Now, uh, the beak is going to curl down. So we'll just drop that down here. And then we have a good block out of our overall volumes. Now, again, I'm really stressing this geometry out. So just control drag to re mesh and uh, we're in good shape. I think I see everything I need to see. Let me go ahead and go back in here. Yeah, that's about right. Now, at this point, uh, I could keep going back and forth. I'm just gonna make some quick cuts. So we're gonna go hop back into the top view here. And instead of kind of going back and forth between uh, this view, maybe I wanna scooch this over just a little bit here. Um, if I move anything out of the way, I can go back in here and reset. So this image here is gonna reset so I can just Reset what I want to reset is basically what I'm trying to get out there. Uh, so now I've en encapsulated all of the areas of the skull that I want. All the volumes, I should say. And then uh, I can go through here. These aren't perfectly lined up, but that's okay. Uh, hold down control shift in this case. And if you want to clip something back, you can use the knife curve. I'm just going to use the clip curve here. So alt tap twice to do a sharp clip. And we'll go around this back here, and that's kind of got the jaw, which I think I probably want to keep. And then up at the top here, that's fine. Now, for these holes in here, I want to punch those through. Um, so, oops, let's go back. Sorry. There we go. Okay, so we've got this. And on Z to go into this mode where you can manipulate the uh, images that you're working with Z to go into draw mode to kind of move your model around behind them and then shift Z to turn it off and then shift Z to turn it back on. So those are your hotkeys. Again, if you want to look any of this up, it's on my um, spot. You know, the, the what's new stuff will be in here, uh, for example. And then in here, if you want to look up spotlight, for example, we've been talking about spotlight a lot. Um, it'll just pop up in here, but then also the playlists are also in there. So check those out. Anyway, now I want to know where to punch those holes, right? Um, one easy way to do that is I'm going to go into my um, brush menu here. So I've got my standard brush selected. You can also go to BPA, which is your paint brush. Uh, it has RGB turned on. And then make sure underneath samples in your brush settings, you have spotlight projection on. And then we can go through here and we can paint our reference onto our object. And then we'll go to the side view here. And we'll, again, we'll just paint our reference onto our object and that'll let us know where uh, those holes need to be kind of punched through uh, so for example um, <laughs> I don't uh, that okay this is a little bit of a weird skull here let me think so that nostril is pretty evident um, so that definitely needs to just be punched through right so this one right here I'm gonna go ahead and mark these with red so I can be like, okay this is definitely here let's turn on RGB for our standard brush this right here is definitely a hole. And then this right here is our orbit here. And that's definitely a hole right here. And uh, any other major 
looks like at the bottom of the jaw there, there's one. Yeah, we'll go ahead and put that in there too. So these three right here are definitely holes. I'm gonna say, uh, go back up to a white color, RGB intensity down, color, fill object a couple times just to knock that back. You can go in here to render fade opacity if you want. Um, I'm just gonna knock that back. And we'll say, okay, we want holes uh, cut through here. And also, this is gonna get a little bit, maybe a little bit tricky, but I'm gonna simplify this a bit. Um, so ideally, the bottom, the lower and upper beak will be um, it kind of goes through right here. That's where the separation line goes for the top and bottom beak. I'm going to leave those together. You can separate the lower jaw and the upper jaw out. I'm not going to stop you. But I don't know. Just to simplify this a bit, we have our overall volume. We have the holes where we want to cut those through. And this eye hole kind of goes down through the lower jaw. And actually, now that I'm looking at this, the lower jaw is actually out here. So I'm just gonna do some really nasty editing here. And as long as I have the um, poly paint turned on when I dynamesh, it'll keep your poly paint for you. So now, whew, let's go ahead and poke holes through here. Uh, one easy way to do that is I can go through here with just, uh, let's do this, BI brush insert uh, primitives, and then hit M, grab a cylinder, uh, pull out, and then pull back to kind of thin that out a little bit. And we're just gonna punch those through. Let's hit Y to go back to gizmo here. And hold down Alt to kind of scale. Let's turn on L Sim so we can scale along that local axis. And we'll just punch that nose. Actually, that goes through the side. Sorry. I'm going to grab this one cylinder mid here. Um, actually, doesn't matter. Grab a cylinder, come in from the side, punch it on through kind of scale this this way a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect, but we have visual cues. So we'll go ahead and match those. Um, and then for the eyeball, same deal. It's gonna kind of punch through here, down through the jaw, kind of down through this way. And we're gonna do a quick Boolean preview first to make sure everything's looking the way it should. And then W, I'm gonna hold down Alt, and we're just gonna again turn on L Sim. We're just gonna kind of punch through the head here. Something like that. And then uh, the jaw, we'll wait on that for a second. So this is what we have. Let's hold down, uh, let's hold down Control Shift, and we'll grab a little piece of the skull, Control Shift A, and then we'll just do a split hidden. So here's our Boolean pieces. We're gonna say subtractive, go out of solo mode, turn on live Boolean up here. And now with these selected, you can go through and you can just modify these. So you can like move these things around, whatever you wanna do to kind of finagle those into place. But I mean, they look generally fine to me. Um, I'm not too worried about it. And it's, we're going to turn this into a Dynamesh later, so no big deal. Uh, so now this little um, chunker on the side, we can still keep sculpting because, again, this is, let's turn off RGB, turn on Z-Ad. Um, it's just Dynamesh geometry, so we don't need to worry about, give that a second. Um, you know, we go into solo mode. It's just a piece of Dynamesh geometry sitting here. So you can sculpt on this and then turn on solo off, and then your live Booleans are sitting there. You can turn those off if it's bugging you. Um, you can hold down shift and turn off RGB if you want to smooth without messing up your poly paint. Um, so we basically have the overall shape that we're looking for here. And then uh, if we turn this one on, it was like, okay, you know what? I want to punch through another a Boolean on here. So we'll go back in here and we'll say cylinder. We'll put another cylinder in here. We'll say split mass points. We'll put this down at the bottom with this bent down arrow. Say subtractive, push this in a little bit, scale it out. Um, like so, there we go, something like this, and it punches, we'll make sure it punches all the way in, so we'll just kind of push this back through, if you ever want to see, just turn on poly frame up here, and you can kind of see the object a little bit better, and we'll match that a little better there, there we go, so now we've got multiple booleans punching through this skull shape here, um, this is concerning let's go check that out oh yeah these don't actually match up one easy easy way to fix that is we can say um, 
Let's do a quick uh, group by normals and then geometry modified topology, mirror and weld. Control shift click, uh, just these blue ones here. Control shift drag, delete hidden. And then you can just say bridge two holes. It's a little bit of work for that particular instance, but um, that's okay. Let's see if we can get rid of this. Delete hidden, there we go. So now that punches all the way through. And then, uh, oh, you know what? I'm gonna use a different technique to kind of tear Although those would probably be separate. Yeah, those are actually supposed to be separate. So that's actually a happy accident there. Um, so then this one selected, polyframe. You hold down shift to smooth maybe. And eh, let's turn down our Z intensity on that smooth a bit. Just to kind of get those, eh, I'm gonna leave those alone. We'll fix that in a second. So we got this, we got all our Booleans poke through. So I'm gonna say, now that we have, see all everything we have here, um, we can make a boolean mesh. All we got to do is go down here to subtool boolean, say make boolean mesh, and that'll stick a U mesh out here. So now these are just, this is actual geometry. An alternative, uh, not to confuse the issue, but you can li literally just say, um, go in here and say, okay, DynaMesh, this here. Oops, let's take that resolution way down. There we go. So now we just have a nice DynaMesh from our U mesh. Alternatively, you can also go in here and you're going to see if I turn all our poly paint off here. Um, so this, let's turn off light boolean temporarily. So this is a red poly group and this is blue and this is pink or whatever it is. When I merge these down and that's set to subtractive, so I do control E, which is our hotkey for merge down, it's going to turn those subtools into white, which means subtractive, which means... Uh, and you could do that manually, but under polygroups, there's a group DynaMesh sub button in here. And essentially what that does is turn any visible polygroups into a sub polygroup. And so when you merge down something that's set to um, subtractive, it'll automatically do that for you. And since this already had DynaMesh turned on, you can control drag and it'll DynaMesh those out. Same deal with this one. Um, if I turn on live Boolean, it's like, hey, that's giving me the result I want, right? Good. Um, but if I just merge these down and control drag, that'll go ahead and turn that to a subtractive DynaMesh. And then you can go through here and you can say, let's inflate this up a little bit. Let's inflate this up just a bit. But at least you have the holes cut through uh, and you're DynaMeshing. So whichever method is easier for you, you know, go ahead and do that. Um, but yeah, this is fine. Uh, our poly paint's still on there. It looks like the beak does go through about halfway. So yeah, we basically have our beak indication here like so, I'm gonna hold down Alt with my Damien Standard brush, and then let go of Alt, and then we maybe grab our uh, Damn Standard O2, which you can get from the internet, and we'll cut in that mouth line, like so, and then we have a skull block out. Uh, I'm gonna hold down Shift, Smooth, crank up that Z intensity just a bit, and we'll go through here and just kinda smooth some of these transitions out, re mesh as we go. Just control drag if I need more. Um, if I'm losing some volume in some areas, I can just use the inflate brush. And then we'll go through here. And again, I'm just going to kind of match. Oh, and we do still have our, um, <laughs> our reference. So we can go through here and just now that we have the holes poked through, we can go through and just make sure that our reference is generally where we want it. That's all looking fine. And then you could even, you know, repaint back through here. Um, it looks like this eye kind of goes way down here. Whatever. However um, precise you want to get with this, these nose holes. And you can paint and sculpt through here. It looks like the, the corners of the mouth go out. So I'm actually going to mask that. Mask pin. I'm just going to grab here, W, that's actually a little more what it looks like. Looks silly right now, but um, that's basically all it is. Use your, use your reference and use your different views and make sure you have a decent understanding of the images you're looking at, which in this case I did not, but that's all right. I'll forgive myself because I'm just kind of flying through here. And then again, for this mouth line here, um, damn standard O2 is a good one. Just make it really big and just kind of dial in that. And then go through here and we'll just kind of, again, just cut in that mouth line there. So 
we have a this kind of a block out curl skull that's about as far as i'm going to take it here we'll go back to the top here i just want to see real quick and yeah, that's not quite as far in something like that and again there's a little there's nuance in there you can go through there and kind of sculpt in and use your clay buildup brush your clay brush to kind of sculpt out a little bit and do all the little skull details that you want but that's good enough so um, in this case if it's just something that's not going to animate i may just decimate it down and maintain some of my details a little bit more if you do want to go ahead and like take this to final um, and again you might want to separate this lower jaw out if you want to um, you can say and it might get a little squirrely with that here i'm gonna hold down shift turn on sculptors pro i'm just gonna relax that little end there a little bit we can pull that back out in a second. So X symmetry turned on. I'm gonna hold down control and tap this latest point in history. Uh, zero mesh half, it size down to zero, nice even quads. We're gonna go from 30,000 down to 17,000. Uh, I'm gonna do a, underneath your subtool project menu, there is a project history. So we'll say project history. And then, you know, let's do zero mesh half again. So I'm nice and low, project history, zero mesh half again, project history. Um, and then if you want your subdivisions back, just control D project history, control D, project history, control D is subdivide, by the way, and then you can just keep subdividing and projecting your history back out, nice even quads. Um, looks like I got a little issue I need to work out there, but, you know, that's basically uh, it, you know, control D, project history. So that's how you can do a block out and then Z remesh to get better geometry and then project your details back and then go in here and finish it up. In my case, like I said, I'm probably just going to go in here to Z plugin, um, decimation master, pre process current. And we'll say take this down to maybe, I don't know, 20K, say decimate. Um, if that's too low, no problem. You've already pre processed. So you can say, oh, let's try 25, um, decimate current. And one other thing I always forget, um, let's undo back. There's an even better option. Uh, Wallace, one of my coworkers, reminded me of this. You can go in here and you can say um, remesh by uh, decimation. So we're going to decimate this. And then now, if I go through here, X symmetry on. And then this is target polygon count. So you have a lot of control in here. Any, any poly paint you may have done to control, protect borders, keep UVs, I don't need to worry about. So now I can just pull this and uh, when I let go, it'll go through and process. So this is like 16,000. Then as I pull this down, um, it'll, you know, it's already pre-processed once. So you can use this to kind of dial in how much geometry you might need to maintain your volume. So again, you can turn off polyframe if it's in your way. I'm just using that so you could see what was happening. So here we are lower. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe 28 is fine or I don't know, 17 is totally fine. So anyway. We now have a crow skull. We can say B, create insert mesh, new, come back uh, to our object here. And then now we have an entire brush. We can just go through here and do a bunch of uh, crow skulls. So there's that. If we like this brush, we can say brush, save as. And again, I'm just gonna drop it into ZBrush 2022, ZBrushes, IMM, we'll call this crow skull so now whenever I want that I can just hop into my comma key go in here to brush um IMM and somewhere in here under the C's should be a crow skull you can just grab that so we'll hold down control and tap this point in history twice so that we get rid of that history that's saved sitting in there and then we're back where we started um okay so back to questions here um and again, if I miss something, I apologize. Cool. Um, okay, so I'm back. All announcements, I'm not sure. Cool, yeah, auto masking is great. There's a lot of cool stuff in there you can use. Um, thoughts on running ZBrush on a Cintiq drawing tablet monitor? Should work just fine. I don't have one myself right now, but um, I'm just using a plain old one. Hey, just in case. Um, uh, play a simulation in ZBrush uh, like we did earlier. It's just underneath your dynamic menu. Uh, there's run simulation, the run simulation. If you want to play that back, 
Oh boy, you know what? I don't remember the steps, but I know someone who does. Um, what, would it, what would it be called? Cloth and wrinkles. Um, it's like record, is it record simulation? Animation cache record. You can watch this video, and that'll uh, it'll show you how you can like save out a cache file and then replay it back uh, using your timeline that we've been messing around with. So share, copy. There you go. I won't hit enter because it's going to drop me out. Um, cool. Yeah, and I do go up. I would if I was just working on this by myself. I wouldn't have to talk about anything, so it would go a little bit faster. Um, and again, this is where <laughs> talking about stuff and showing how things work as opposed to just working on something and looking at your reference, it looks better, it goes faster. Um, that's why live streaming for me, I like it to be instructional because I don't want to leave anybody out in the cold. If you're like, I want to know how to do that, you're just doing it. So I want to give you the information. But at the same time, by the time you know I'm done talking about stuff, it can, I don't know, it's just a lot of block out stuff and not a lot of execution, unfortunately. But we'll, we'll, We'll go through and we'll just kind of burn through uh, some stuff real fast. Now that you know how things work, and I'll call out anything that's kind of um, specific. So go ahead and enter there. Um, having issue making a 50 million poly water tight. I'm appending a cube outside of the mesh and trying to make a Boolean mesh. Uh, you wouldn't even need to do that. You can hit W and say remesh by union, and anything that's together will be uh, remeshed. If you're looking for water tightness, a way to check that or just to append a cube to your scene. Alt tap the cube here. You can set this cube to subtractive, go in here to live boolean, and then as you pull up through your mesh, you can check for anything that's not watertight. Of course, I have a lot of single-sided meshes up here in, the, in here, so you may see some obvious problems in here, um, but that's just a way to kind of check to make sure that you know, everything is where it should be. So uh, everything in here looks fairly watertight except for our little single-sided meshes. Uh, delete there. Uh, ZBrush proper tool to model hard surface stuff. You really want to be careful about topology of the mesh to make it as low res as possible with no unnecessary verts. Uh, you can, it would be more Z modeler than like sculpting in Ziri mesh, but uh, sure, no problem there. Um, or would it be better to go with 3 Studio Max or Maya or Max Maya Moto Blender Cinema 4D pick I mean if you're if all you're talking about is like I like to make faces and then move those verts around anything that makes faces and you can move verts is fine so Bryce 3D um, cool show some techniques creating revolver chamber is it better with boolean or Z modeler uh, a little bit of both you know so if I wanted to do a uh, what is that? That's a cylinder, right? Make poly mesh 3D. Group by normals. We'll go ahead and just take this one here that we want. Delete hidden. We'll say close convex here. So we've got this shape. And actually, I probably want to keep this one closed, right? So control W. And then I don't remember exactly how these things look, but something like, oh, we'll do this. Um, six shooter, right? So we'll go in here to transform, activate symmetry in the Y direction. Uh, let's see, transform in the Y direction, radial count of six, and then we'll grab a cylinder. Split mass points, W, scale this, yeah, I'll scale it, um, let's go to the side. Scale it back, so these things cut in, right? Something like this, and then, wait, do those cut in? I think these, okay, I don't really remember. Um, I'll make a lot of revolvers. <laughs> uh, so this would like put those little divots in there and then, okay, let me look. I have to know what I'm making first. Oh, there we go, okay. So this thing, right? So those divots, one, two, three, four, five, six, great. And then on the inside here, we'll say control drag out a copy and then we'll move this over and then we'll scale these 
down so they fit. So something like this, we've got divots that cut in and then in here are these little holes and those go all the way through. Oh, and these divots actually, um, let's go ahead and say split mass points. Again, these, this is gonna be ugly, I'm not matching anything in particular. Um, let's go ahead and do a quick um, group by normals and we're gonna say u, 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 delete hidden and then we'll say close convex hole. W, move, so that gets cut through. Oh, the back isn't really even that rounded. Hey, you know what, this is gonna be a special cylinder. So, I don't know, we'll cut this through here. Uh-huh, uh-huh, and then on this one here, let's go ahead and say crease PG, dynamic, uh, all the way up, crease level, smooth set of three. Uh, same thing for these, we want nice smooth results, right? So we'll say crease PG, dynamic, smooth subdiv of three. This one here, same deal. Um, Let's say group by normals, crease PG. So we've cut this all through. So basically what I'm looking for is we'll shoot this one to the top. These are both subtractive, a live Boolean turned on. So this is the end result of the mesh that we want, I suppose, although this looks weird, that should be squared off, but whatever, we're doing something special. So we have uh, this, and again, these are live Boolean. So if you go through here and you wanna move the stuff around, you know, feel free. Um, this one here, if we want to Let's go here and let's say, let's go to solo mode here. I want to, for example, scale these down. I'm gonna hold down Alt and we'll scale those down just a bit. Okay, so, oh, and you know what? Let's move these forward a little bit. I don't know, something like this is what we're looking for. So now, uh, again, I wanna make sure everything's nice and smooth. So is this the one we need to select here? And then we'll hit D for dynamic, there we go. So everything's nice and smooth, but no fall off. I want those really super crispy. So, and we want polygroups on every surface. So I'm gonna go through here, especially this one. Good. So we're gonna say uh, make Boolean mesh with dynamic subdiv turned on, because we had dynamic subdivision. So here's our U mesh here. Um, and then, you know, this, this mesh is kind of crusty. Um, and these poke all the way through. Oops, uh, let's say delete this. I didn't have everything on. Turn it on there, there we go. So, for example, uh, let's say dynamic subdivision here. Uh, Boolean mesh, dynamic subdivision, everything turned on. U mesh here. Uh, now you could dynamesh this and smooth it and call it a day, if you'd like. Uh, what I'm gonna do is give this a shot. It's kind of a complex mesh, but you can try doing like zero mesh half, that size down to zero, keep groups, smooth groups down to zero. And that'll look at your polygroups and go through and try and rebuild this entire thing um, based on your polygroups is using where your line cuts are and give you new geometry. And then you could Z model this and box model this. So for example, it's like there's our rebuilt geometry. So if you want to go through here and say, oh, crease PG, crease level of one, smooth set of two. Now you have something you could Z model if you'd like. Um, you could keep pressing your luck. You can do shift D, let's say zero mesh half with keep groups turned on and see how low you can get it. It might do a decent job. Um, in this case it does. Uh, and in fact, if it makes it a little bit easier, sometimes you can get, you can bridge these results here. So you could say delete these, zero mesh this down and then bridge those back. But honestly, it did a pretty stellar job. So again, uh, crease PG, let's do crease a little of two under your crease menu, smooth set of three, so we get a little bit of a nice fall off there. Or hell, even crease level of one seems to be fine. There you go. So now we have a revolver cylinder. And again, if you wanted to use Z modeler for whatever reason, uh, you could hop back in here and do that. So if you wanted to do like, let's make all these the same polygroup. Let's say control W. So if you wanted to do like an inset polygroup all legacy, wanted to inset these for some reason and then Q mesh polygroup ball, hold down shift to pull along those surface normals. Um, you could do that and then again just crease PG, hit D. So you can use a little bit of Damien standard or uh, Z modeler. And in this case, maybe we'll do a crease a little of two, smooth set of three, something like that. So again, not a real revolver cylinder, but something along those lines. Um, Um, so I've been watching videos on Office. Oh, thank you, Jake. Um, get big guy from graduating to getting a job recently. Got my first job in the industry as a character artist. Nice. 
Absolutely. Glad uh, the video tips help, but man, you, you put in the hard work, so great job. That's not easy. Cool. Awesome. So, um, I don't know that Scarecrow would need something like this, but we'll hop back into our mesh here and say, okay, uh, we got a few minutes left. Let's go ahead and take this guy to final-ish. So anyway, we've got this blocked out. Um, I'm not sure who's going to stream after me, so i got to hop off. But um, let's go back to our reference here. Oh, let's do... Oh, man, there's so many cool stuff we can make. Um, we got a rope. We got this. We got stitches along the face that we can do. Let's do that. Let's... Oh, man. We got fiber mesh. We got a hat we need to make, like a little witch hat. Um, although some of them wears a witch hat, some of them don't. That's kind of cool though. Uh, let's do a quick witch hat. Uh, okay. Let's go in here with a cylinder. Yeah, it's fine. Cylinder, split mass points. I'm going to take the top of the cylinder here and we'll scale it down and stretch it back out. And then we'll say insert multiple edge loops, keep poly group. I don't want to mess with that. W, let's go in here to bend curve. And we'll put in one bit of resolution in here and we'll kind of bend this back here. And in fact, we could even scale this down a bit along here and even scale this one down a bit, something like this. And then let's go through here and I don't like, I like having things capped, so I'm going to cheat it a little bit. Let's do this. Let's do a crease. Hit control D. Let's say delete lower. Let's do group by normals. I'm going to isolate just this bottom one here. Delete hidden. Delete hidden. Close. Convex hole here. And then I'll say move. So that'll go to a point. Let's turn on exometry. There we go. Um, and then on this brim here, let's go into insert single edge loop here. It's kind of a floppy brim, which should be fine. Let's do polygroup poly loop because we, we've already talked about clothing. So Q mesh polygroup ball. We'll go ahead and pull this out. And then we'll do a, um, let's do this. Let's do transpose polygroup all inverts. Oh, no, we don't have to invert. It's already done for us. And we'll kind of pull this down. W here. Actually, now that I see that, Kind of looks like it's pulled up, so let's go ahead and leave it up. Okay, so uh, we got our hat here, and then for our wobbliness, it's kind of we kind of have geometry built in, so let's go ahead and finish this out. So, uh, okay, insert multiple edge loops, keep all the groups. We'll go ahead and square this out, square this out. Let's do uncrease all. We'll go through here and we'll kind of just floppy this up a little bit. And if there's some notches, I see on this one there's a notch taken out, so we can actually go through here from the side and say, okay, mark this one, Q mesh, polygroup ball, just pull that one through, put a little notch in there. Let's do a quick group by normals. Um, crease PG, crease level of one, smooth set of two, just to kind of see how this thing's playing out here. And again, we're just kind of put this a little closer over his head, make sure this is all out here you know and after this I might uh, again because I gotta hop off at 8 but I'll um, I can maybe hop onto my channel and we can figure finish this out um, or at least get a little bit closer to finish uh, and here if we're, if we're de if we like this geometry and it's working fine for us we can go through and we can apply the dynamic subdivision right now it's not real if you hit shift D it turns it off and then D turns it back on um, which is useful but if you want to go in and sculpt wrinkles um, doesn't really have what we need. Again, if we need to shrink his head down, that's totally doable as well. And then if we want to, uh, for the buckle on his hat, um, yeah, I'm actually gonna 
His head's a little bit bloated, so I'm gonna go and fix his head because I've had a hat I wanna be a little more streamlined. So here's his hat. I'm going to say duplicate this off. We're gonna say Shift D to turn off the uh, polygroups here or to turn off dynamic. Uh, we're gonna go in here to polygroup poly loop. We're gonna steal this and this, I think. Geometry modified topology, delete hidden. We'll say Q mesh polygroup all to Q mesh this out. We'll do another crease PG, crease a little one, smooth set of two is fine. Uh, BI brush insert clothing M, buckle. Just drag it in from the side, say split mass points. We'll do shift D on this one. We kind of just uh, turn on L sim so we're scaling along that local axis here. Move this up and rotate here. And so now we've got kind of buckles. Let's go ahead and inflate this just a bit. It looks a little thin for our taste here. Okay, so again, just block out, just block out, just block out. Get too caught up in doing that other stuff. So let's go ahead and turn off X symmetry. Let's say dynamic apply underneath your geometry dynamic menu. And then we can go ahead and just like indicate some uh, little Harry Potter sorting hat look here. And then again, on this head, we're going to squeeze this in just a little bit. So his hat isn't so nuts. There we go. So again, we've already talked about um, using our cloth brushes to our advantage. I think we even still have it turned on in our pinch brush underneath brush. Auto or um, elasticity is uh, up to 100 again. So again, you can just kind of indicate the wrinkles where you want them and then go in and let's use the pinch brush to kind of go through and uh, you know add the compression wrinkles on the back where the cloth is kind of folding backwards. You can kind of go through here and just kind of indicate and then come back in here and just kind of squeeze some uh, wrinkles out of that. So here, here, and same thing for the face. Like so. Um, and before I get in here and start doing a lot of detailing on the face, uh, I guess we can keep it symmetrical is fine. Uh, symmetrical is not fine, but uh, in our case, I'm going to kind of ignore it. Oops. So for the head here. Let's go ahead and chew some of this up a little bit because we're going to we're going to turn this into like a burlap sack basically. And we have all the areas that we want and then we're going to go and slice it up. So give me a second. We it's kind of the same process as our oogie boogie that we did um that would be under created playlists here. Again, under the Big Blue Genie, if you go and search for, you could just type it in, but right here, create your own nightmare before Christmas. We kind of did something similar where, I don't I guess we don't need to watch it, but in here, you've got that. Oops. Um, oh, good. Let's see. Add the block list. Great. Um, yeah, stitching along the leather. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So that uh, Oogie Boogie is basically what we're doing. But uh, in here, for example, I'm going to go in here to solo. I just want indications of where we want that cloth to actually be. So we're going to use our block out to determine where that is. And it's going to go around the head here and then around the mouth here. And then yoink. And then around the bottom of the neck here. Now, instead of going through here and thus masking out the rest, what I'm going to do is go in here and say edge loop mass border, which is under your, um, where is that? Geometry edge loops. Somewhere in there. Geometry. Oh, boy. Geometry edge loop. Edge loop mass border. Uh, say, so we have this here. I'm going to control shift tap the white, say auto groups. And now I know I just need the yellow and the pink. Everything else can go away. Delete hidden. I didn't put any detail on here, so we're fine. I'm going to say Control W, make the all one polygroup, zero mesh half, that size down to zero. And we have our cloth geometry. Uh, if I want to add thickness to this, I can go through here and say uh, extrude polygroup all and just pull this in. And then we'll say uh, display properties flip way down here at the bottom. Display properties flip. Um, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of working with thickness, but I think in this case it's probably our best bet. So we'll go through here and um, 
we'll just work with this. So now that I see this, we can say, hey, let's grab all these little block out pieces. And again, we haven't really done anything final at just getting our pieces in there and kind of blocking stuff out. So now uh, back to the stitches part. Uh, you can have one solid piece and then sculpt on that one solid piece uh, and then put stitches in here with another mesh or you can use this mesh as the mesh that you want to have stitches and have that actually separate pieces. I don't if I was going to 3D print this, I might keep it one solid piece just for ease of use later as far as like making everything watertight. Um, in this instance, I might just take this top piece here, say delete hidden, and then we can just slice through uh, where we want those stitches to go. So in this case here, um, let's type X to go out of X symmetry here. Uh, is there an easier way to... I mean, I can just indicate right here, right? Um, Let's just do this. So I'm gonna say uh, Control D to give me a little more resolution. Uh, Control Shift, we're gonna go in here to slice curve. And then around the eyeball, we may want some stitching. And then down from the eye, we're gonna have a stitch that goes here and then cuts across. And then Control Shift tap. And then this one, we're gonna have a stitch that goes here to like maybe the back of the mouth. And then from here, we want a stitch that kind of sweeps through like this. And uh, that's fine. So control shift, I'm gonna do a geometry modified topology mirror and weld across the x-axis. And then this one, I'm gonna say auto groups so we can make this one and this one all one poly group here. So this is basically, I'm just telling ZBrush where I want my stitches to go. Um, this one looks a little bit weird. So it's gonna cut through here and then maybe I'm gonna have this one a stitch right back through here and again auto groups I'm just kind of grouping things where they need to go in order to put my stitches where they want and then these two I want to be grouped together there we go so this is basically where I want my stitches to go so now that I have that um, I can use this again to kind of frame my mesh and put my stitches there um, if I want to, though, I can go through here. These are going to be like actual pieces of geometry stitched together, and I, they don't, I don't want them to be the same. Um, let's try this. Let's go zero mesh or half, keep groups down to zero, and see how this works. This will give me new geometry. And they are all kind of lined up, which is not necessary, but nice. And if there's anything weird going on through here, you can go through here with your Z-Modeler brush and say, like, collapse edge. Let's make sure we have X symmetry turned on. Sorry. We can collapse this back and collapse this back and collapse this back. Again, just kind of helping it out. And then we'll say zero mesh half once here. And if that's not quite working out for you or you're having to do a little bit of cleanup, that uh, you can actually bridge these two points here. And then this is all can all just be smoothed out. Okay. That's fine. So you could split these out in their own subtools and zero mesh them separately. Uh, they seems to be working okay. Just kind of zero meshing what's here. Um, let's leave it at this. So now we can split these up if we want to. We can leave them together. It's kind of up to you. So just options. Nothing wrong with options. So now that we have that, um, as far as putting the stitches through here, let's go ahead and do... Yeah, let's do this. Let's go down here to split, group split. So these are all going to be their own separate pieces. Um, and then we can just kind of sculpt them uh, separately if we'd like. And I guess I should have done this extrude polygroup ball. It'll be fast. I can just go through here and say flip and then just tap and then flip and then tap and then flip. And that'll make sure all of these have the same thickness on there. And then uh, let's do a crease PG. Dynamic, crease level of two, smooth sensitive of three. I should have done these when they were all together, my bad. Two, smooth sensitive of three. And in fact, on these ones, to keep these corners together, I can also just run a crease tolerance and that'll go ahead and crease those corners for me. So those will stay together a little bit better. And then uh, once those are good and it's everything's 
kind of how I would want it. I'm going to say uh, dynamic apply. So now we have real geometry on here. So now we got kind of a Mason verger look here. So uh, depending on where these things are coming in. So for example, if I wanted these to be actually stitched, I would say, okay, this is going to kind of pop out a little bit and then it's going to kind of dig in and then pop out where the stitches are and dig in. Um, if you don't want to sculpt through the mesh, you can go into any of your brushes, and say auto masking, uh, back face masking, and turn that on for your new brushes that you'd like. In this case, I think we'll just leave it alone. And uh, I think I have lazy mouse. Let's go ahead and turn that on. Again, feel free to use your cloth, your thick skin that we talked about already. I'll go ahead and pull this in and then pull this out. Oops, this should probably be, yeah, it's fine. And we actually have subdivision history now too. When we hit apply, it gave us real subdivision. So you can drop down uh, back and forth in your subdivision history if you'd like. And then however these things interact, and we don't have anything really interacting together as far as the stitching goes. Um, so in that case, if we wanted to put stitching like down the side of this face, um, oh, I didn't save off a copy. That's okay. Which one has all my undo histories? Cause we can just, let's see. Nope. Nope. One of these should. Hmm. Mail. Whoops. When I, sp I mean, it's not a huge deal. What I can do, I can just frame the open border. It's not a huge deal. So I can just pick one of these open borders. So if I had a duplicate of the original, I could just frame my polygroup mesh and I'd be kind of done. Uh, but now I can just go one by one and say, We'll just duplicate this off. Say control shift, grab this outer one. Well, let's go down here to say geometry. Subdivision level one is fine, delete higher. I'm gonna grab this outer one, say delete hidden, and that'll give me a border I can frame. So what kind of stitches do we want? I think just regular plain old stitches will be fine. So we'll do a quick save here. I already have a stitch brush, but I'll show you how to make it real quick because we have one more minute. We're gonna go through here and we're gonna say, uh, make poly mesh 3D. Um, no, I still have that turned on. Initialize Q cube, scale it out a little bit. Uh, insert, uh, now we'll do this bevel edge loop complete here, and then we'll shrink that down a little bit. We'll hit Control W, Control Alt, drag over this, and we hit D on this one. <laughs> uh, micro poly off, dynamic smooth additive up to two. That's basically what we're getting is just like a little noodle here. Um, obviously, feel free to. Make this however you'd like. Make it as fancy as you want. I'm gonna turn these ends down just a tiny bit here. Something more like this. And then I can do uh, multiple versions of these. I think I'm just gonna do one and then I'll go through and manually kind of Frankenstein these out. So it'll look something like this. So from here, B, create insert mesh new. And you can just use these as stitches. You just go through here and just, you can hold down control and it'll snap to your brush size. So it'll be consistent. That's an easy way to do stitches, right? Um, you can also go in here with that brush selected that you just made the IMM brush and say brush, uh, curve, nope, uh, stroke. Sorry, I messed that up. Stroke, curve mode. And then when you drag these stitches out, they're too close together. So let's go in here to uh, curve step and we'll say maybe two. That'll space them out a little bit more. Maybe even like 2.5. Okay. Again, if you want to save this brush, feel free. Uh, if you want to do cross stitches, you can say, um, let's go in here. You can say, rotate this 45 degrees, duplicate, rotate this back the other way. Maybe pull it out just a little bit here, merge those together. Now we already have a stitch brush, which is this one. So I'm going to say B, create insert mesh, append. Okay. So now when I pull this one out, we have cross stitches and we just switch back and forth between them to get whichever one we want. So back here, we have our open border that we want to put stitches across. So we can go through here and we can say, okay, frame. And in fact, that's fine. We'll turn, we don't even need all this. 
I'm just gonna slice this off here. Delete hidden. And you feel free to cross, you know, put put as many lines in here as you want. I'm gonna just do zero mesh same. And then uh, we can frame our open border here. Go back to our stitch brush. Hit M. I'm gonna grab the simple stitch. Uh, I'm gonna make sure X symmetry is off. So when I put them on here, I'll get my stitches. Uh, whatever size you want, you can just tap off. And then I'm gonna say split mass points to put those in their own um, subtool. And if there's too many, I can go through here and say auto groups. And we can just go through here and we can thin them out manually. So we can say, you know, you get rid of you and just kind of go through here and like thin out, just kind of put the stitches where you want. Um, and then you can go through here. I'll show you another quick way to kind of, you, you could space them out further if you want. Uh, this just gives you a little bit more control here, like so. And we'll say delete hidden. I'm just gonna be lazy and do a quick mirror and weld. Um, and then if you hit W, and then you control tap any of these. You can go through here manually and you can just kind of rotate these things around. Um, you can also use your move brush. So move. And as long as you have uh, auto masking or topological turned on under auto masking, you can go through here and just grab one of the ends and grab the other end. And just kind of rotate these around. So you can kind of go through and add some variants. You can also put variants into the brush, um, but I'll leave that up to you. Uh, and then we can hit D for dynamic. Oh, while you were had these drawn out, if you wanted them to embed into the mesh more uh, with your brush, just go in here to depth and say embed. Just drop this down or pull this out, whatever one you want. And then it'll embed those more or less. And then now that you have this information, you know where the stitches are, you now how, know how the cloth is gonna interact. So again, you know, it'll kind of um, maybe bunch up in between here, you know, um, and then where, where the stitches come in, it might sink down. Oh, and this other thing too, you don't need this anymore. You just use that to frame your mesh. So you can just say, delete that out of there. Um, so now you have the interactions between, so we can, we can bunch this up in between and then where they kind of punch in, we'll kind of sink these down a little bit and then pull up and then sink down and then pull up through here and then if you can feel free to use your um, pinch brush if your pinch brush right now you can see this is we have pinch brush with simulation iterations on but it's just acting like a pinch uh, as we have too many polygons so we can just isolate just this area and then you can go through here and pinch and still get your simulation if it's too much though you can go or if it's too wrinkly just drop your subdivision levels down and now you can go through here and again use your pinch brush to kind of you know enhance those however you'd like. Um, so yeah, scarecrow block out. Hat, buckle, stitches, face, cloth, noose, a lot of block out stuff, shirt, um, nothing to final, but you know, you can take what you've learned here, you know, you'll have it all set up and then you could go ahead and do your final uh, from this. Um, it would Honestly, this is where things start falling together. Um, or another real quick thing here before we head out. Uh, we got the head here. I'm gonna say mask this through here. I'm gonna go down here to um, what are we looking for? It is a fiberish type mesh. So fiber mesh here. We're going and these the fiber mesh I'm seeing is kind of like straw. Um, not a lot of. It's not gonna be like hangy hair. So we can use that to our advantage. So fiber mesh preview, I'm going to say modifiers, take the base to white and the tip to white for now. So I can see it. We don't need a lot of fibers. And in fact, the coverage, we can crank that up. And if I want these to actually have depth or width, um, you know, you can render it and get it to kind of render that way. Let's go in here to uh, profile and we'll put that to four. And then the segments here, uh, we don't need a ton of segments. And then uh, gravity here, we can turn that down. And then I can kind of move these into place, but that could be, and you can clump these however you'd like. So feel free to kind of play around the max fibers, the length, uh, the coverage here, any sort of twist. Uh, looks like the twist is kind of, there might be a little bit of, 
not clumping, but what am I looking for? It seems like there's a little bit of noise, which would be what? Hmm. I don't know. I'd have to play with these. But anyway, once you have your straw, you can go through here and you can say uh, fiber mesh accept. And uh, you can have quick preview on or off if you want to go through here and like brush groom uh, your fibers. You can. Uh, but you can also, if you want to, go in here back to the preview settings and turn off fast preview. Now you'll see the actual um, geometry here. So you can go through and you can clump these together. You can polygroup these together. Um, this would take a little bit of finagling on my part, but just wanted to throw that out there really quickly in case you were <laughs> wanting to do, um, you know, this type of thing. Uh, in fact, how would I go about this? So I would say uh, W, Q, Control, Mask, Pin. I would say take a clump through here, hit control W, isolate it, and then go through here and just kind of, you know, and I could even pinch, let's turn off simulation iterations, go through here and pinch to clump if you wanted to, and just kind of do that a bunch of times just to get, you know, this move brush, C add, RGB off, topological off. Um, just to get this the look uh, that you want so it's not so um, scattered. Now, of course, you can delete any of these out of here that you want or shift to smooth if you want to smooth them out, uh, that type of thing. So anyway, we'll uh, try that again at some other point. And you don't even have to do that. If you have, um, you can even make your own clumps. You know, if you don't want fiber mesh root to tip, you can go through here and just very quickly make your own insert mesh brushes. Um, you know what, let's just, in fact, let's start with a plane. Make Polymesh 3D here. And uh, I want some resolution on the cylinder, so maybe something like this. Control drag out, control drag out, control drag out. Don't need the plane anymore. Um, so you can just make your own kind of clumps and then you can say uh, brush, create insert mesh new. And then now you've got little straw clumps that you can drag out. Um, it seems like there was something else that it wasn't the, oh yeah, the brush extrude. So B E extrude profile. I don't know that this would be, I mean, you can just pick whatever profile you want. If there's a cool hay profile in here, but if we went back to the head, and then we said uh, underneath our stroke settings. By default, I think it's going to want to kind of like hang like hair. Like it's if you sculpt out, it's going to want to kind of attach. If you don't want that, we can say bend start, bend in. Snap, we can go ahead and turn off. Turn off lock start and lock in. Let's do as line. And then we don't need, yeah, like there's a curve fall off if you wanted to go from thick to thin. It's not, maybe you, maybe you do want that, just not as pronounced. So maybe a little bit thicker, a little bit thinner, and it still wants to attach, that's where you go in here and say repel strength, I think, down to one. So now, if we make our draw size smaller, you can go through here and you can just kind of create little hay um, attachments here if you want. And we're just, again, it just adds line, so you can kind of go through there and just kind of do that. So a couple different options there for you. Um, let's see here. Um, Stitches along, simulate fabric tightening up, bending around the area where the stitches are. Oh yeah, we talked uh, very briefly about that, but that's the basic idea. Um, Matt King will be unhappy with using his likeness. <laughs> yeah, I mean, does that have a... <laughs> does that look like Matt? Um, absolutely, cool. Well, um, that would you say you know every function in ZBrush? No, not even close. I know every function that I use a lot. Um, Cool. Yeah, go check it out. Uh, and again, just for quick resources, if you're kind of lost and you want to see stuff that I've done before on my ArtStation page here, uh, there's all sorts of goodies usually in here. Some Sometimes even the live stream for like SpongeBob. You know, here's the... This is just a sizzle. Like, oh, no, that is the YouTube. That's, so here's the entire live stream for that one. Um, so you can get caught up there. And again, with the corners folded down, those are instructional. So you can go through there and there's a ton of videos on just making that stuff. So I'll put that here if you want to get caught up with that. And then again, on my YouTube channel, if I sit, if these are all the previous live streams underneath the big blue genie on the playlist. But if you're ever looking for something like fiber mesh, 
the hell is that? And go in here to fiber mesh and it'll just pop all this up. So a bunch of little fiber mesh videos in there. So you can check that out if you'd like. Get you cut up. Cool. Alrighty. Um, IMM and VDMs adding resolution. So high right now, I think I pressed the wrong button somewhere. Um, if your IMMs are coming in high, that might be, you might have dynamic turned on. So like while I have this mesh here, if you have D turned on and it's like subdiv up to like four or something like that, and you're using IMM brushes, um, it's going to add dynamic subdivisions to that. So that might be it. Um, trying to think what else it would do for it. Like VDM, sometimes since it is an alpha, you need a high resolution mesh to pull that alpha detail through. So that one's kind of, it is what it is. But anyway, thanks everybody. Catch you on the flip side. And if I finish this guy out, you know, on my stream or something, maybe sometime later this week, we'll go through the detailing process because he's all there. It's just a matter of going through and just doing the sculpting part. So the block outs techniques are all on there. Um, and then it's just a matter of dialing your detail in and even this type of stuff. If you wanted to put like a stit, um, a weave pattern through here, we could totally do that with surface noise, but we're in the texture later. So a lot of fun stuff we can do. Cool. Thanks everybody. And uh, like I said, see you.